guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock on a Saturday and it's time for a review show special, which is kind of weird because any regular viewers of this channel will know that the review show special normally goes up on a Sunday. Well, one week only, I've changed this. And there's a few different reasons. Uh, and, and one of the reasons is I've got a very special video going up tomorrow night. And in order for that video to make sense, I have to do the review show special tonight, right? So um, for one week only, this is the only week, but for one week only on, on Magic TV, we're not going to have an interview this week. We've got some amazing interviews lined up, but we're not going to have an interview this week. Instead, I'm doing a review show special on the peak uh, today. And then tomorrow, I've got a very special video, which I'll tell you about at the end of this video. You kind of need to watch the review show in order for that video to make sense. Now, what is a review show special? I'm sure you guys have seen the channel enough to know that it's when I take a deep dive into a particular topic, a particular subject, a particular creator, or a particular product. And I have had an overwhelming amount of people ask me to review this, The Peak by Mr. Blonde. And so this is going to be a full in-depth review. Now, normally when I do a review show special, I... Um, I, I, I do an interview with the creator, first of all, and I, I, I sit down with the creator, I chat about their process, how they created the trick, the history behind it, so on and so forth. Then I bring it back into the studio, I do a performance, I give it a review, and that's the end of the review show. And it normally runs about 40 minutes. I'm not doing an interview with this one. And the reason is nobody knows who Mr. Blonde is. Everyone's guessing. Uh, I have absolutely no clue who Mr. Blonde is. Uh, but I can't do an interview with somebody who doesn't really exist. So instead, I'm just going to review it. The other thing is, you're not going to see a performance of this trick either. And the reason you're not going to see a performance is because, very, very simply, you're not buying a routine with this. There is no routine taught on the project. And we'll get into this a little bit later on. There's no routine taught. There's no live performance. There's no talk about, hey, this is the routine I would perform. This is what I do. Nothing like that. You are literally buying a peak device. So by me performing this and giving it a routine, I'm kind of giving um, inaccurate information to anybody that's watching this review because you're not going to learn that uh, that routine. Yeah, I could put a routine together with a peak, absolutely not a problem, but I'm not going to because that's not what you receive with this product. Now, there has been a lot of controversy around this and I'm going to talk briefly about the controversy and then I'm going to talk about the product. I'm going to really break it down because there's been a lot of uh, statements made about it that are true and some statements that are not so true. And having actually played around with it for a few days now, I, I have my thoughts. And so I'm going to give you my thoughts. But first of all, let's talk about the controversy. So this, this, this trick, The Peak, has been created by Mr. Blonde from a group called The Collective. Now, when you go onto the website, because Mr. Blonde does have a website, when you go onto The Collective website, it talks about Mr. Blonde, it talks about Mr. Pink, I think there's a Mr. somebody else, there's three Misters, uh, and it's a collection of magicians and mentalists um, that are going to be bringing out tricks. And Mr. Blonde, uh, uh, nobody knows who he is, but if you actually look on his Instagram page, because Mr. Blonde has an Instagram page, um, or if you look on here, you know, any of the ad copy for The Peak, or you actually go and look at The Collective's website, Mr. Blonde makes the uh, statement of, you know who I am, I am among you, uh, you have probably seen me perform, you've probably bought my, my collection, you've probably bought my tricks in the past, um, but now I form this company called The Collective in order to bring tricks to you. Um, the public. And, and and so nobody knows who Mr. Blonde is. As I say, people are guessing, especially on the Magic Cafe. Nobody has any factual information about who the uh, who Mr. Blonde is. And he has gone to great lengths to actually hide his identity. In other words, uh, for example, and we'll get into the tutorial later on, but when you start the tutorial, it starts off with just a, a, a picture of the thumbnail of Mr. Blonde, uh, along with heavily distorted voice um, kind of like one of those voice distorters where he talks about thanks for buying my product. You know, I'm uh, I'm part of the collective. I'm going to be bringing you amazing magic tricks. And then it switches to somebody else who we don't know who they are. Um, you know, he's he says that he's um, uh, he's bought in one of the top uh, experts in the field of peaking in order to give you the information you need in order to learn this trick. And then this faceless person, you only see their hands and hear their voice. 
um, they explain what this is, and then afterwards it cuts to Mr. Blonde again, who says, thanks for buying this, there's going to be more to come, see you later, goodbye. So nobody knows who's, who's, who's created this, nobody knows who Mr. Blonde is, more on that a little bit later on. The controversy comes from the fact that um, this was hyped to hell and back. I mean, this was super, 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 super hyped. Um, so first of all, you had a, a, a video that went out, a kind of a teaser video of really big names. Like we're talking about Andy Nyman, Mark Paul, Peter Nardi, D. Christopher, Louis Lavelle, Chris Rawlins. The list goes on and on. And Mark Ellsdon, like tons of people uh, reacting to this, going, oh my gosh, that's amazing. That's the best thing I've ever seen. That's unbelievable. But not really knowing what it is that you're actually seeing. And then the trailer dropped. And I think there was a couple of different versions of the trailer. One version gave away exactly how it worked and then the other version didn't. Um, uh, and, and kind of uh, the, the, the official trailer uh, came out about the peak. And, uh, and then you realise that all of those reactions were for this particular product. And since then, it's now being talked about on the Magic Cafe. Reviews have started to come in from various different places. Uh, Prop Dog. Uh, who have a reputation of not stocking stuff that they think isn't very good, um, have, have, have basically posted something on their Facebook page saying, hey, I'm not going to be buying this. this is, uh, sorry, I'm not going to be stocking this. Prop Dog are not going to be stocking this. This is something we're not going to be doing. Um, and then uh, Luke Dancy. I love Luke Dancy. Uh, Luke Dancy goes on all about magic and does a little mini review talking about the peak and talking about how he feels it's deceptive and he's pulling it from his um, his uh, shop and he's not going to be stocking it either. And then you've had a few people that have gone on the Magic Cafe that have received theirs and they're unhappy with it because they can't use it properly. You've then got uh, other people saying it's brilliant. Uh, in the midst of all of this, you had Christian Grace, who was one of the people that reacted to it at the very beginning, on going how brilliant it is. Then he went on the Prop Dog Facebook post and said, well, actually, now I've seen it, I'm not really, um, you know, it's not really what I thought it was, kind of retracting that reaction. But then off the back of that, now an apology has gone up on the Magic Cafe saying, actually, no, uh, I jumped before I could, I, I could walk and, and this is actually brilliant. And it's just more magic bollocks, really, to be perfectly honest, more back and forth and more uh, craziness. Now, the, the, the marketing campaign... Some people have said to me it reminds them a little bit of the Quantum Deck, which I totally understand, because if you remember the old Quantum Deck um, trailer, it was people reacting to the Quantum Deck. Um, and it was like a six-minute trailer where people were reacting. And the difference was you kind of saw the trick. Uh, and also, every single person that I actually performed it to, I then explained how it worked and told them, hey, this is the Quantum Deck. This is actually how it works. So every single person that I actually... Uh, showed it to that formed the quantum deck I actually um, uh, performed it for them and then told them how it worked and then we put their full unedited uh, reaction including the performance I did for them on the project so you can see all of the performances on the actual project along with a whole bunch of live performances as well so there was a big difference and also you know who I am we don't know who Mr Blonde is so that's the controversy people are going back and forth on the cafe trying to guess who Mr Blonde is um yeah, and in the midst of it, it, this peak has been released and a lot of people are saying, especially on the cafe, oh, this is terrible, uh, you know, you should get your money back, why have I bought this? And then there's other people that are saying this is the best thing I've ever seen. We're going to try and delve into it and I'm going to tell you exactly what I think about the peak, about exactly what it is. However, aside from that, let's talk about the way that... Uh, I don't understand, right? Okay, so I've got a background in marketing. Marketing is my favourite thing outside of magic. I'm more likely to be reading a marketing book than I am to be reading a magic book. So I, I understand marketing quite well, okay? And before I actually talk about the peak and whether it's good or whether it's bad, I genuinely don't understand why Mr. Blonde is choosing to remain anonymous. I just don't understand it at all. Because he makes the statement and says, hey, you know who I am. I'm amongst you, but now I'm going to be releasing magic um, uh, and mentalism. And, uh, you know, you're not going to know who I am and blah, 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 and so on and so forth. And, and I don't understand why. 
I don't understand why this person, whoever he is, and it sounds like a man on the video distortion thing, and he said he's Mr. Blonde, so I'm going to refer to him as a man. I don't understand why he has decided to create this identity to the point of having a tutorial where he's distorting his voice. Gone to great lengths, creating new Instagram profiles, doing all of this. I don't understand why somebody would go to that trouble. It's not like the magic industry. It's not like the magic community is massive. It's not like we're the music industry. It's not like we're Hollywood or something like that. It's a small industry. It's a small community. And my attitude is I get excited when there's particular people that bring out a trick. For example, Scott Alexander, one of my favorite magicians, his stuff is very highly priced. I'm going to buy it sight unseen, whatever the cost, because I know that Scott Alexander's stuff is brilliant. The reason I put so much time and effort into my projects and the reason I go above and beyond in terms of the amount of content that I put into a project is because I want people, when they hear the name Craig Petty, they want to associate that with a good product. So Cheeky has just come out as of time of filming this and uh, Cheeky launched a couple of days ago. And on the Magic Cafe, somebody's gone on there and put a post up about Cheeky. And, and I've had four or five people go, oh, I love Craig's projects. I'll definitely pick this up. I love Forecast. I love this. I love that. I love the other. I've never seen a bad Craig Petty product. He puts 100% in. That's what I'm trying to achieve. I'm trying to build up a reputation of somebody who, when I bring a product out, I have put my heart and soul into it. So you can get excited. Like I'm excited when I see Greg Wilson has released a new product. I'm excited when Scott Alexander has released a new product. There's certain creators that when they bring a trick out, I know it's going to be good. So why would Mr. Blonde go to the trouble of hiding his identity? Because the problem with this is once you, once you do this, there's no repercussions. Like this is now getting kicked on the internet. Nobody knows who Mr. Blonde is. He's openly said that he's released tricks before, but we don't know who to blame for whether this has got, you know, the people that are unhappy with this, um, that have paid a hundred dollars or whatever it is and are unhappy with this. They've got nowhere to go. They've got nowhere to, uh, to speak to because they don't know who this person is. People have bought this directly from Mr. Blonde's website. We don't know who we're dealing with. This is somebody who's even gone to the trouble of having a voice changer. I, I just don't get why you do that. You know, what? build a brand up, especially if you're already a creator. We're being told that this person is already a creator and already created magic. For all we know, and I'm not saying this is the case at all, but for all we know, I don't know who Mr. Blonde is. But for all we know, the last three or four tricks that have been bought out by this person might have bombed. The last three or four tricks that have been bought out by this person might have literally gone into the toilet. People might be um, uh, really unhappy with the tricks this person's bought out. And so he's decided to change his name to Mr. Blonde. It could be that there's this person that releases tricks and the tricks they're releasing are good, but they've got a whole bunch of other tricks that they think aren't up to that level. So they're releasing it through Mr. Blonde so it doesn't affect the sales of the stuff that they bring out that is good. I, I, we don't know because we don't know who this is. We can't build up a personal connection with this Mr. Blonde and it baffles the mind. It absolutely baffles the mind. And Mr. Blonde has made one post on the Magic Cafe when everything started kicking off, and it is kicking off right now. When everything started kicking off, Mr. Blonde made one post on the cafe um, answering a few of the questions. And one of the questions that he asked, somebody asked on the Magic Cafe, hey, um, um, they were talking about the reactions and why would big names... Why? On the cafe, people are saying this isn't very good. And that's not my opinion. I'm going to get to the review in a bit. But a lot of people on the cafe are saying this isn't very good. And somebody went on there and said, well, hang on a minute. You know, why are the big name magicians that reacted to this saying how amazing it is? Because they are. And, and, and realistically, they're the only face of this product because Mr. Blonde doesn't really exist. So the only people that are like pushing it forward are the Luca Volpe's and the Peter Nardis of the world that have said how great this is on camera. Um, you know, and they've, they've, they've gone on there and said, well, you know, why are these people reacting this way if it's as bad as everyone's saying? And somebody went on there and said, oh, maybe it's because, um, in fact, I've got my phone here. I'll tell you exactly. Uh, hang on a minute. Should have been more organized, terribly disorganized, but there you go. 
Here it is. Right, okay. Um, somebody called Neil S. Uh, said maybe they didn't have a device in their hands. Maybe when they were reacting to this, they were just reacting to a video. And maybe they weren't actually reacting to the trick. And uh, Neil S. has said, uh, and he answers Neil S., and says, yes, all those big names have, uh, have, device, have their device in their hands and are having no issues. All of those big names have a device in their hands and are, and are having no issues. So Neil S. asked uh, or, or hypothesised that the reaction shots were based on watching a video and not off having the thing in their hands. And Mr. Blonder said, yes, all those big names have a device in their hands and are having no issues. Now I see that he's used the word have here, not had. They have a device. That's a different thing. You might have sent it to them later on, but if they didn't have it in their hand, those reaction shots are just based off a video. And honestly, despite what you're putting here, I think that those reaction shots are based off watching a video and not having the physical product in their hand. I was asked to do a reaction video and I didn't have time to get around to it. Um, but I was asked to do a reaction video based off watching a video, not having the real thing in my hand. Now the real thing has now come through and that's great. And so I can give it a proper review. But when I was asked to do the reaction video, that was based off watching a video. So I genuinely do believe that um, I genuinely do believe that a lot of the big name magicians that we're talking about here that gave reactions, the reactions were based off watching a video, not having the thing in hands. But I probably, I, I fully believe that every single one of those people now has a product in their hand. What's concerning, and I haven't spoken to Christian about this at all, but what's concerning is why Christian made one statement on the Prop Dog Live and then made an apology on the Magic Cafe just a couple of days later. I mean, this is just crazy stuff. It really is. And at the end of the day, it's a magic trick. It's a peak. So I don't understand all the controversy. I don't get it. There seems to be a lot of shadiness going on here, which I don't understand. And realistically, it would have been a lot better, in my opinion, if... Uh, somebody had stood up and went, for example, my name's Craig Petty and um, this is called the Peak and it's a Peak device and um, this is what it does. And yeah, any questions, ask me as opposed to, you know, pretending all of this, you know, I am Mr. Blonde, you don't know who I am, but you've seen me. You walk among me. I walk among you. I know who you are. You know who I am. I've released tricks before, but you know what? No one is going to get to know my identity. It's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. That's not marketing. That's just insane. Anyway, I'm going to put all that to one side and I'm going to review the actual product. So let's talk about the actual product. First of all, what is the peak? Well, the peak is, no surprise here, it's a peak device. Now, I'm going to tell you the pros and the cons. I'm going to tell you the good points. I'm going to tell you the bad points. This is only my opinion. This is getting very heated on the Magic Cafe. You've got two different camps. You've got people that are like really pro the collective. You've got people that are really against the collective. And I will not be stocking this on my shelves no matter what. This is just my opinion. I think I've, I've earned... I, I've been honest enough on reviews in the past for you guys to know that I will tell you exactly what I think. So first of all, let me tell you the first good point. This is a damn sexy looking little wallet. You know, a lot of uh, wallets that come out these days, they uh, are very old school. It looks like a wallet from the 1990s, the, uh, the early 2000s. This is a modern wallet. If you're, uh, if you, I, I, I'm seeing a lot of in, uh, Instagram and Facebook adverts at the moment for you know sleek little wallets, and they look just like this. Um, it takes up literally no pocket space. You can just put it in your top pocket or in a jacket pocket or a trouser pocket. It takes up no pocket space, and it would not look out of place when you pull it out of your pocket. Um, it's a, it's a really good looking wallet. It, it feels like a normal wallet. Also, it's robust. I think this is going to take a licking and keep on ticking. This is the really good thing. And also, because it's got elastic, so it's a peak device, obviously. And for those people that are new to magic, what is a peak device? Well, it's a device that allows you to peak information. Somebody writes information down and you, you, you peak that information, right? That's what basically what this is. Um, because this is elasticated here, 
Um, you can fit a whole bunch of stuff in here. You could fit credit cards in here. You could fit store cards in here. If you wanted to use it as a business card wallet, you could fit a stack of business cards in here and it looks good. And you've got this little clippy thing here that you can clip other stuff in place uh, or you can clip it, whatever. It's really nice. You can put money on the outside, which, uh, which looks good. So the wallet looks good. It's well made. It will last a lifetime of that. I'm fairly sure. So that's a positive. There's a tick in the, uh, in the, in the pro section. The first con comes from the fact that uh, this is designed for UK style business cards. Now this is not a problem for me in the UK. I have tested my business cards. I haven't got them here with in front of me at the moment. I've tested this with my business cards extensively and they fit in no problem at all however for us business cards it is too small for us business cards so the solution that is being given to everybody is to cut the business cards down i think that's ridiculous i'm not going to want to sit there cutting my business cards especially if i've got a pattern that covers the whole of the back of the business card or something like that it's just going to look terrible when i hand it to people i'm not going to cut it down i'm not going to sit there cutting all of my business cards down i think that i think that's a massive oversight with the product turning around and saying well yeah it doesn't fit us business cards but just feel free to cut them down i don't think looks great also they've been given uh, i don't know who it is the collective or whatever has given um, a web address to people where you can get business cards made up cheaply. Well, that's well and good, but here's the thing. A business card is a very important thing to take around with you. I'm not going to want to go to a cheap-ass business card design thing where I can get 50 business cards really cheap uh, just in order to do this trick uh, because it's going to look cheap. I want to have really nice business cards that I've spent money on that look good. Anybody like Steve Della, for example, will tell you the importance of having a really nice looking business card. So if you are outside of the UK, you have three options. You either cut your business cards down, you get some cheap ass business cards made up off the internet specifically to do this trick, or you print new business cards out at whatever cost it is that you spent before, but reduce down in size in order to fit this business card holder. Those are the only three options. That is a massive oversight. When uh, uh, when uh, the Orphic wallet came out, for example, they had an Orphic and an Orphic Plus, um, you know, and, and they had the foresight to make different sizes of it. I've got a trick coming out through Murphy's Magic soon, and I've got a USA version and a UK version because it's different in the USA as it is for the UK and vice versa. I think it's a massive oversight that they didn't think of that when the biggest market to sell your tricks is America and countries outside of the UK, the fact that they've made this specifically for UK business cards is an issue. It's not an issue for me, so bear that in mind, but it is an issue for anybody um, who has bigger business cards. Now, another thing that people have said on the Magic Cafe is that it's difficult to put your business card in there. Now, I stretch the elastic, which they don't tell you to do, but I stretch the elastic and I don't have a problem with business cards going in there at all. It's, uh, he says, having an issue putting business cards in. I've played around with it and it, it's not really an issue at all. They just go in there really nicely. Totally not an issue. I don't think that's a problem one jot. I don't think that's an issue. Um, I think that that's just practice. You know, I think people have been quick to criticise this wallet and they're trying to find every little thing. I see this sometimes, you know, in my um, entertainment company, we rarely get complaints, rarely get complaints. But the, the odd time that we do get a complaint, what they'll do is they'll try and make up as many different things as possible to have the one thing that they're legitimately entitled to complain about. They want to make that um, that case stronger so they'll they'll think of every little thing, right? Uh, and I think that's what the case is here. I don't see a problem. I've played around with it. As long as the, if the business cards are the right size, I don't see an issue with these sliding into there at all. I don't think that's a bit of a problem at all. Then we come to the probably the most important part of this, which is the peak, right? Now, when you think about a peak, well, actually, there's the tutorial, which we'll get to in a bit. When you think about the peak, when you think about a peak wallet, now, I am not a mentalist. I do mental magic. I do do routines that involve a peak, but I'm, I'm not the greatest mentalist of all time and I never will be. When you think of uh, getting a peak, right? When you think about a peak wallet, realistically, there's two different ways that you can peak something. The first way is like an Orphic wallet. 
where you put something into a wallet and then you have a reason to open up the wallet to go back in, maybe to get another business card or whatever, to get some money out or whatever it is. You have a reason to open up the, uh, the business, uh, the, the wallet later to take something else out. Um, and in that moment, you get the peak, right? The second uh, time, uh, the second way to get a peak is when you get a peak. So you put the business card into the wallet and then you put the wallet down on the table and then when you pick it up to put it away, you're peaking it then. That would be like a shadow wallet, for example. Then you've got wallets where, or, or an SUC peak is another perfect example. Then you've got wallets that integrate both of those. So for example, a Stealth Assassin by Alakazam has an SUC peak, so you can put it into the wallet and you can, uh, you can, you can get the peak as you put it away. Or you've got the main peak, which is where you put it into the wallet and you open up the wallet to get something else and that's when you get the peak, right? Um, those are really the two ways to peak. I mean, the Nexus wallet had a really cool peak in it, which was kind of a variation of the two where you put it away into the wallet and then as you turned your hand over to say gesture, like hold your hand out or something, you're getting the peak then and it's kind of a different way of doing the peak. But generally as a rule, um, those are the different ways to peak, right? What you have here... In essence, is and you get a little black business card with it as well, a little black credit card with it as well, which aids the deceptiveness of the thing. But what you basically have here is you have a business card. You have somebody write something on the business card, and then they put the business card away. And when they put the business card away, you now have access to it. This is a little bit like a privacy screen for people that know the privacy screen, like a Telethought wallet or something like that, but built into um, this style of wallet. And it's not a privacy screen, it's carbon fiber. Um, so you don't need the privacy screen. And what the, what the tutorial will tell you is that you can put the business card away in the wallet, you can put the wallet down on the table, and then you can see it, but they can't. Now, I wouldn't feel comfortable with putting it down on the, on the table. I wouldn't feel comfortable with putting it down on the table because if people are watching from angles and normally when I perform, I've got people from literally every single angle, I would be concerned. I would be concerned um, that they might be able to see something or possibly depending on the lighting situation. Um, however, the, uh, the faceless person that just has hands on the tutorial goes through three different ways of actually obtaining the peak. And uh, the one way is by literally putting the thing in the wallet and putting the wallet down on the table. He then goes through a couple of other ways. And one of the ways he goes through is by holding the wallet up here, getting the peak and then putting it away. OK, um, that's basically what this is. It is a peak built into a really modern looking wallet. Now, a big deal has been made of this being a brand new method that's never been seen before, which I kind of don't really get. And the reason I don't get it is because this method of getting a peak has been, you know, there's very little difference between this and a privacy screen or between this and a uh, SUC peak. You know, you're putting the card away and you're getting the peak as you're putting it there. Or with the Telethought wallet, you can put both of them down on the table, you get the peak and then you put it away, right? There's very, very little difference. What they have here is they have the peak built into this modern looking wallet and it's not a privacy screen. It's it's a different method of actually allowing you to see that information. Now, there's pros and cons with this. And the big con, and this is the one that everyone's talking about, is it is very difficult to get the peak. And there's people on the internet, there's people on the Magic Cafe, there's people everywhere that are saying, this is the, this is, it's impossible to see the peak. It's absolutely impossible to see the peak. Because when you put the card in there, it's too dark to be, to be able to pick up the, the word. Now, here's the thing. It is dark. It is dark. It is absolutely dark. My eyes aren't great. And I really struggle to see this. I really struggle to see this. I would be nervous using this wallet in the real world because I really struggle to see that peak. Uh, if I hold it up here, so if I have it put in, and then I hold it up here, I probably got like an 80% chance of seeing it. But again, if somebody had crappy handwriting, um, I would really be like doing that, which would totally give the game away. 
I would find it a lot more secure to have a full clear view of what it is they're doing. The shadow wallet is a perfect example. With the shadow wallet, by the way, I don't even use the privacy screen that comes with it. I took that out and I just have a completely clear view, which they talk about on the tutorial. So uh, I would stick with my shadow wallet when it comes to peaking this information. Um, or the Orphic wallet. I love the Orphic wallet peak because it goes in the outside and as long as I've got a reason to go inside the wallet, boom, job done. Um, so I find it really, really worrisome to get this information, even holding it up here and doing what they say, which is adjusting the light. I've got, now, my eyes are terrible. So I got Ryland to help me with this, uh, whose eyes are great because he's young. And I asked him to do it. And I, he watched the tutorial with me and I said, right, you try it. He had a much better hit rate with this. And, and here's the thing. We tried it in various different lighting situations. We were at the House of Secrets and we tried it at the House of Secrets. We tried it outside. We tried it in sort of a normal lit situation. We tried it in a whole bunch of places. Ryland didn't have a problem with this in a well lit situation. So if he was outside and he was doing this outside, he could pretty much nail it almost with one look before he then put it away. And, and he didn't have too much of a problem when it was like in a room with a normal lit situation. So if he was in a normal, normally lit situation, it wasn't dark, it wasn't bright, again, he wouldn't have a problem. In the House of Secrets, where it's a much darker environment and it's dimly lit, and also outside the House of Secrets at night when it was actually quite dark, he could not see a darn thing. He just couldn't see anything and um at all he couldn't see anything so i understand where people are going where people are saying on the cafe i do think that people are right i think that it's difficult to see the peak and i think if you're wearing glasses it might be an even more of a struggle however i don't think it's as bad as people are making out i don't think it's completely impossible to see I think that you have to be aware of your lighting situation. I think if you're outside, if you're the sort of person that performs festivals or you're wanting an everyday carry because Mr. Blonde in his introduction, he goes, this is the, old, that's my voice changer voice. This is the ultimate everyday carry. It kind of sounds like a Dalek. He says, this is the ultimate everyday carry. If you're wanting to, to do this and you're planning on performing it out and about and it's in the middle of the day or it's in an office and you work in an office, or you've got a residency in a restaurant in the day, or whatever it may be, or it's a corporate luncheon gig, I don't think you'll have a problem. In an evening wedding reception, in an evening corporate do, in a restaurant in the evening, any time where the lighting is dim, I think you're gonna really struggle. Uh, I think it's gonna be almost impossible to get that peak without making it obvious that you're looking for the peak, and for me, the most important thing about a peak, because let's be honest, there's bloody millions of peaks. Just in the last year, you've had the Nexus wallet, you've had the Jameson wallet, you've had um, the, the Shadow wallet, you've had the Orphic wallet. There's millions and millions and millions and millions of peaks that have come out. And so in order that realistically, what you want out of a peak, let's be honest, yes, you want it in a nice looking wallet. And that's what this has got going for it over and above anything else. But the single most important thing that you need is to be able to see that information reliably 100% of the time in every environment. I know I can use my Orphic wallet and I can get that read 100% of the time. That's why that wallet is my everyday wallet. Um, I know that I can use the Shadow wallet. I can use the Stealth Assassin wallet. And over the course of my career, I've used the Stealth. I've used the Shadow and I've had great... Uh, great, absolutely fantastic um, uh, reliability with it. I, 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 I've not just cr done this review based on just having one of these put through the post and not having time. Me and Ryland have played around with this and this is not reliable 100% of the time. It's a fantastic wallet, don't get me wrong. It's a brilliant looking wallet and the idea behind it is genius. I can see why those names reacted to this because if they were shown this, it's a really great idea, but it's hampered with reliability issues, in my opinion. I don't think that, I'm, I, I'm not saying it's as strong as Prop Dog. I'm not saying this should be taken off the shelves. And I'm not saying it's as strong, uh, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not saying Luke Dance is correct, where he's like, right, I'm not stocking, I mean, that's their opinion, right? But I am saying, unless you're using this, unless you've got good eyesight and you're using this in a brightly lit situation or in an averagely lit situation, and most people I know 
that perform it's social situations in a bar in the evening it's 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 and gigging at night you know you get gigs in the day but you want something that can be worked in every situation i don't think this can but then and this is the biggest issue and this is the thing that people aren't talking about on the internet and i really don't know why my biggest issue with this is the tutorial it's 27 minutes long because they've made it the collective mr blonde has made a rod for his own back and what I mean by that is he's made the decision to be completely anonymous. He's made his decision that he's not going to tell anyone who he is. OK, fair play. That's your prerogative, Mr. Blonde. That's absolutely fine. But as a result of that, you've got this world's leading. He introduces this guy that's on the tutorial as, hey, this is one of the most le one of the most e leading experts in the industry when it comes to peaking. But we don't know who he is. We see some hands and we hear a voice. We don't know who it is. And then we don't see any live performance footage. We don't hear any routines. And you might be thinking, well, yes, Craig, that's true. But he's selling this as a peak. He's not selling it as anything else beyond the peak. But it's $100, man. It's $100. So let's just give a little bit of bang for our buck, right? Let's not just throw this out and go, hey, I've got this incredible wallet. And here's, um, can I have 100 of your dollars? Fantastic. Now here's this 20-minute tutorial explaining how it's done. I expect more. Let's contrast this with the Shadow Wallet, shall we, from the 1914. Because the Shadow Wallet was a fantastic wallet. It's still a minimalistic wallet. Not as minimalistic as this. Totally different in many ways. But the peak is remarkably similar. The peak is you put something in a wallet and then you can get access to it by looking at the outside of the wallet but it's also got a thought of card routine built into it but regardless of the fact that it's got a thought of card built into it regardless of the fact that the, that, that the peak uh, is the same other than the fact that it'll work in pretty much every single lighting situation other than all of that there's a freaking two-hour tutorial where Louis Lavelle and uh, D. Christopher and by the way, Lewis is one of the world's leading industry players when it comes to peaking. And so is D. Lewis and D sit there and give you a masterclass on how to peak. Not just a 20 minute thing where all I'm seeing is a close up pad, a whole bunch of peak boxes and your hands where you can't really explain much because you've been limited by the fact that you can't show the guy's face and you can't see anything other than the close up pad. This is Lewis and Dee sitting next to each other and talking about, OK, this is what you do and this is why you do it. And Lewis is talking about, right, let me explain the best time to get a peak. And now let me talk about this way of presenting it. Now let me talk about that way of presenting it. Now let me talk about that way of presenting it presenting it which is much better much much better than here's a 20 minute tutorial here's three peaks thank you very much let's go back to mr blonde and give her buying my product ridiculous then you have the orphic wallet let's look at the orphic wallet what is the orphic wallet the orphic wallet is like a three and a half hour tutorial okay there's a couple of routines by me but the majority of it is lewis's uh, tutorial as you would expect it's lewis's product and he goes into peaking he goes through multiple routines, multiple ways of peaking it. You see live performance footage with both of those products. You see live performance footage, live performance footage. I've talked about this before, haven't I? And you see Louis, and then you get a, you get a PDF with a bunch of other different routines and ways of peaking it as well. And Lewis goes through everything with a fine tooth comb. And again, you see live performance footage. So you can see this stuff in the real world. It's not just a case of, uh, hey, uh, this is how you do it. It's a case of this is how you do it. This is the timing for it. This is the right way to do it. This is the wrong way to do it. Here's the way that I do it. This is the routine. And by the way, let's watch me performing it to this person so you can see those, uh, th those, th that advice in action. That is what... Ma and both of those products are cheaper than this. Then you've got the Nexus wallet. The Nexus wallet has an incredible peak built into it. And it's a four and a half hour tutorial. Yeah, it's not just about the peaking because it's got a card to wallet. It's got a whole bunch of other stuff, a switching device, as does the Orphic. But what uh, what they do is they go through live performances. They go and take a camera into the real world and they perform this stuff in the real world. And then Javier comes back into the studio and breaks it down with a fine tooth comb about how to use that peak. The best time to use the peak, the actions, the reactions, everything. And then what you have here is a half ass 20 minute tutorial where it's literally some faceless bloke sitting at a chair talking to you about how clever this device is, talking about how each one has been tested by hand. And then you've got three peaks. This is how you do peak number one. This is how you do peak number two. This is how you do peak number three. Thanks very much. Bye, my shit. Goodbye. 
this, if you're going to charge $100 for a product, why don't you put some tutorials? Why don't you put, put some routines in there? Because people that are going to be buying this are going to be beginners. You know, I remember speaking to Sean Dunn a little while ago, and Sean Dunn, who heads up Penguin Creative, he turned around to me and he said, you know what, when we release a product through Penguin, we assume that the person who's watching it is brand new to magic, and this is the first trick that they've ever bought, because we want it to be accessible to everybody. And even if you think the people that are buying this have ne uh, or already have all the information in the world about doing a peak, why would you not throw a couple of routines in there? Why would you not throw a couple of routine suggestions and a couple of presentations? Apparently, you've got one of the leading experts at peaking in the entire world delivering your tutorial. How about you can't pan the camera up and you say, this is blah, 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 blah. He's one of the leading experts. He's going to talk to you about peaking, not just about how this trick works but he's also going to talk to you about how to actually make it work in the real world he's going to talk about blocking he's going to be talking about presentations and then we're going to take the camera out into the real world and we're actually going to see him performing this to real people so you can see this stuff in action rather than spending most of your time and effort pretending that you're some sort of fbi secret assassin nobody knows who the hell you are and so you're limiting your project because you don't want anyone to know your identity or the identity of the leading expert when it comes to pink devices it is absolutely Absolutely, completely and totally insane. And you know what? I might have got it completely wrong. I might have got this peak completely and totally, utterly wrong. It might be that it works in every single lighting conditions. It might be that you could take this to a nightclub and it works. But you know what? I don't know. Why do I not know? I don't know because there's no live performance footage. Instead, it's you at, or you or your mate sitting at a close-up pad pretending that nobody knows who you are. And I don't know who you are, and I don't really give a damn who you are. I'm, rely I'm reviewing this based on the product. And for me, I think a lot of people at the Magic Cafe have got it wrong. I think they're, they've got their pitchforks out, and they've got their knickers in a knot. And I think that it's not as bad as they're making out. I don't think it's an issue getting the card in there. I don't think it's an issue getting the peak in 50% of the time. I don't think it's an issue. I think you'll be able to get the peak relatively easy in most situations, other than in the dark or in low light situations. I think you're going to struggle. But you know what? I wouldn't know because again, you why are you playing games? Why are you pretending you don't why are you pretend why are you playing this whole come on, I don't know who you are, but surely you're old enough to stop playing dress up right now. What are you doing? Fulfilling your fantasies from when you were a kid? You know, did you want to be freaking uh, James Bond when you were a child? Did you want to be um I don't know, did you want to be um the guy from Mission Impossible? Are you actually finally fulfilling your actual desires and your you know I am Mr. Blonde? And by the way, when you think Mr. Blonde, you think Reservoir Dogs. And Mr. Blonde was a psycho who used to torture people. Is that really who you want people to think of when you think of you, Mr. Blonde? I would like, here's what I would like. I would like you to come forward and actually tell people who you are. And then I'd like you to address the concerns that people have with this wallet. Because ultimately, I, you know, when you posted, um, when you posted, uh, getting yeah, the phone call, Mr. Blonde, not really. When you posted on... Um, uh, when you posted on uh, Instagram and you said, rather than addressing um, the negativity and the, the untruths, let me just show you what this peak looks like. How about, and then you had a little video where you just opened up the packaging and you put the card in there. Basically the same as the tutorial. Rather than doing that, how about you say, you know what, this whole Mr. Blonde thing was a bad idea. How about I tell everyone who I am? Oh, and by the way, I'm going to upload another hour and a half tutorial to uh, to Murphy's to attach to the project so you can see me performing it in the real world. And I'm sorry, I've just pretended that uh, I don't exist and, you know, I went through all of this rubbish. Uh, you've spent your hundred dollars. I'm going to treat you actually like a customer because the people that are pissed off on the Magic Cafe, the people that are annoyed on Facebook, the people at Prop Dog who will refuse to stop this product, people like Luke Dancy, although Luke Dancy is another thing, who refuse to stop this product, they're your customers. They're the people who are buying this thing from you. So why don't you actually just address the concerns? You know, I, I, when people are pissed off about the quantum deck, I went on the Magic Cafe and I answered question after question after question to the point that people were saying, hey, I can't believe Craig's still posting on here and addressing every single person's question because I believed in the product. I wouldn't know if you're believing in this product or not because I have no idea who you are. I have no idea who you are and the fact that you're trying to hide your identity is what makes this trick 
very, very difficult to review because there's no live performances. There's no substance to the tutorial and there's no connection between me and the person who's released it because you're pretending that you, you know, you're trying to hide your identity from absolutely everybody that's watching this product. As it stands, what we have is a really nicely made wallet. And man, it is a nicely made wallet. We have a really good idea. This is a really good idea. But what we have is something that feels like it's been rushed to market because seriously, who's your target audience? It's got to include people outside of the UK. The fact that you made this specifically for UK, uh, UK business cards and you didn't have a USA version tells me that this was rushed to market. The fact that the, that, that, like, the tutorial is so bare tells me it was rushed to market. The fact that like, you, you're just ignoring everybody who's got anything negative to say about this at all tells me it was rushed to market. And it's a shame because this is a really good idea. And I would love to be proved wrong. I would love, I would love to be proved wrong. But as it is, you're not gonna prove me wrong because you don't even want people to know who you are. Ultimately, bottom line, you want a review for this. If you are the sort of person that wants a wallet to be able to do a peek and you wanna do it in the real world and you wanna do it out and about in the daylight, this is maybe something that you might wanna go for. If, however, you want a masterclass on how to actually peak things and you want a masterclass on how to actually perform mentalism, I would go for either one of four wallets. The Stealth Assassin wallet by Peter Nardi, which has got like five hours of tutorial. I would go for the Nexus wallet by Javier uh, Fuenmajor that has got about four and a half hours of tutorial. I would have a look at the Orphic wallet by Louis Lavelle that's got about three and a half hours of tutorial. Or I'd go for the Shadow wallet by D. Christopher that's got about two and a half hours of tutorial. All four of those wallets are great. All four of those wallets are by real people and we know who they are. They've all got live performance footage in the real world, every single one of them. They go through different routines, different concepts, and each one of them gets the peak as good as this. If you want a minimalistic wallet that looks like this, and, and you're happy performing out in the day, and you don't want any advice on routining or blocking or audience management or anything, and you just want a wallet that you can maybe do a peak with, then this is the one to go for. As it stands, I'm gonna give it 60%. It's okay in certain situations, but it has been half asked and it's annoying because it could have been a hell of a lot better if it wasn't for the ego of the faceless person who refuses to tell people who they are. It's 60%, unfortunately, I can't give it higher than that. So there you go, that's another review show special in the bag, guys. And as I say, this comes on Saturday night. The reason it comes on Saturday night is because tomorrow night I'm doing a one-off special video, nine o'clock tomorrow night. I've been thinking about peaks and the problem is every single way that people, that every single product that comes out these days, it's always a peak wallet. It's always a peak wallet. Oh, yeah, I've got this amazing wallet that I can use to peak and it's always the same thing. There's no creativity when it comes to peaking, right? So I've been thinking the last couple of weeks about different ways to peak information that doesn't involve a wallet. And I've come up with five different things that I think would work really well. And I'm gonna break down and teach you what those five things are tomorrow. So tomorrow night at nine o'clock, I will be going through five different methods for peaking information that doesn't require a wallet. I'm not trying to sell this, I'm not trying to um, uh, but, but sell you a course or sell you a download or anything like that. I haven't got a product to sell you. This is just me thinking for the last couple of weeks of how I would actually create a peak. I've come up with five ways that I think would work really well and I'm gonna run those through you tomorrow. You're not gonna get any live performance footage just because I, I just wanna give you this information. So I'm gonna sit down with you. I'm gonna talk you through the five different ways that I'm actually thinking about approaching peaking moving forward. Uh, because it's something I've been thinking of a lot more. And then over the coming weeks and months, I'll do some live performances of the various different methods. And I'll report back to you as to which ways work best, which ways don't work as well, and why. So that video is at nine o'clock tomorrow. Then as of next week, we're going to be back to normal with a talk magic at uh, Saturday at nine o'clock. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below of the review. I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm -hmm.